Today I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the idea of legacy code as it relates to the front end, but also generally uh, the idea of um, a legacy. And there's a few uh, specific instances of legacy that I want to talk about. Um, you know, there's this legacy that our computer science curriculum uh, leaves us with, which is uh, often the first thing that we as programmers learn is inheritance um, as a as a structure for laying out our code. And we learn about, you know, um, deeply nested inheritance trees. Um, and then there's this, you know, uh, notion that investing heavily in a in an architecture that relies on inheritance leaves us with the legacy of tightly coupled code uh, and that's especially true in the front end and then there's another legacy that I kind of like to touch on and that's that investing in you know other people's frameworks uh, can often leave us with a legacy of tightly coupled code to that framework um, to that way of thinking and so uh, let's you know look at some of the frameworks that you might have used uh, PhoneGap, Sentia, jQuery Mobile, there's all of these frameworks for building mobile web applications um, that are out there. And they offer pre-built components with the promise of rapid development. And my understanding um, of these frameworks, based on you know experience with jQuery Mobile and even PhoneGap and some of the other frameworks, is that they work really great for prototyping, but they often fall short whenever you get into more complex scenarios and you end up trying to uh, work your way around them. Um, there's a question of worth, you know, is the time that you save uh, by using this framework, is it really worth it? Because in my experience, it's often negated by having to work around um, idioms or ways of doing things that the framework uh, supplies that don't really fit your application's domain model. And if you pick one of these frameworks, you know, what do we really inherit? Uh, we might see something like this stack trace uh, where you know you're, you're debugging your, your app built in Sencha uh, which is built on ext JS and you, you know something goes wrong and you've got to go through however many classes in the inheritance structure and the architecture to really understand what's going on uh, and unless you have an intimate relationship with that framework and unless you spent a lot of time with it um, that that could be challenging uh, or unless you have a, a really uh, good expert on your team who knows that stuff already. And so um, these are kinds of the things that I want to talk about in this uh, in this presentation. And so speaking of inheritance, you know, why is it um, that our first steps in computer science often uh, are, are given uh, pointing out inheritance to us as the way to learn things? Maybe it's just because, you know, uh, as human beings, we understand inheritance. Uh, it's an easy real world model to map to. Um, but it's been my experience that leaning on inheritance and deep uh, nesting of inheritance um, leads to tightly coupled code. Um, and what do I mean by tight coupling? Well, I, I mean by all the connections that you have throughout the various modules in your system. Um, tightly coupled code means that there's tons of different connections uh, in all of these different modules. And as a code base becomes larger, um, code that is tightly coupled uh, and low in something called cohesion becomes incredibly difficult to work with. So what do I mean by cohesion? So if uh, uh, coupling refers to all the interdependencies, you have tons of different connections between all of the, the pieces in your application. Cohesion um, and no cohesion uh, basically refers to um, how related the pieces of code in a single module are. You know, are the responsibilities of each method in that in that module, are they closely related? Um, and when you're dealing with inheritance, in my experience, as the base for your foundation of whatever you're building, whether it's a mobile app or a desktop app, doesn't matter, um, you, that leads to tightly coupled code with low cohesion. So there's lots of interconnections, and then there's lots of um, responsibilities and intermixing of things in modules that don't really match. And so the solution that I'm proposing and that I hope we can look at today uh, with regards to building mobile web applications is the principle of composition, um, which leads to looser coupling and higher cohesion. So less connections between pieces in your app and um, uh, more symmetry between the pieces of code that are in each module. And composition sets up um, this idea of uh, a has a relationship between pieces of code versus uh, an is a relationship. 
And on the front end, this is especially interesting because um, the rise in popularity of you know asynchronous module loaders, or just even the idea of module loaders, um, has created somewhat of a controversy. And I think people tend to not step back and take a look at really, you know, well, how does the architecture of my code affect what's going on here? Um, you know, how how if I'm using an inheritance, uh, that sets up something called a uh, a compile time. Um, relationship between code because if I have class A that inherits from class B um, or the other way around B inherits from A then that sets up a load order dependency I need to have class A loaded um, because class B um, is a instance of class A whereas if I use composition uh, and I delay that relationship to runtime uh, then I can um, have a has a relationship and that gives me a greater increase in flexibility of how I load things. Um, so there's there's all these sort of ideas around uh, composition and how we can um, make our code uh, load with less dependencies and less interconnections and less tight coupling. Um, and maybe uh, that's a, a principle that you want to explore in your code, regardless of whether you're building a mobile web app or not. Uh, and so what I'd like to do is take a look at um, a simple example that I've built to sort of illustrate this. I've been building mobile web applications lately with Backbone and CoffeeScript and a tool called Lineman, uh, which uh, I'll put a, as a link at the end of this. Uh, so here's the, here's the app that I've got so far. It's really simple. It's got um, two sort of UI components that uh, I, I wanted to, to use for this app. One is uh, a list view combined with this sort of collapsible header. Um, so I've got my emails here, and I've got trash, and I've got inbox. And then when I click on one of these uh, emails, you'll notice only I have the from field and the subject field. And I want to see the, the body of that message, so I'm going to click on it. And I get this nice sort of mobile drawer paradigm that you may have seen in Facebook. And so what I'd like to do is examine you know, these two examples, the, um, the collapsible list view and this drawer view, and see how they were constructed, not using um, inheritance, but using composition both uh, in the JavaScript, uh, in this case CoffeeScript code, uh, in the style sheets, in the markup patterns, um, and see maybe just to give you some ideas uh, about how um, you can structure your code uh, using composition instead of inheritance. So let's take a look at what it what it's looks like in the browser. So here's my, um, my little app with the emails and let's take a look at this collapsible uh, thing you can see right here. And the, the, the basic thing to note is that I'm using Twitter Bootstrap uh, as sort of the close to the metal uh, piece. Uh, I, I don't want to call it a framework because it's sort of just bits and pieces that I'm pulling from. I mean, Bootstrap builds itself as a framework, but um, I'm using uh, bits and pieces and I'm kind of composing my own widgets. And so the first step was when I wanted this control, you know, there is no pre-built control in Bootstrap that that looks like this. And so I kind of had to go through the the documentation and, and see what are the pieces that I could use to compose this sort of collapsible list view. And I, and I came across these um, stacked tabs and I thought, oh, that, that looks like a good place to start. So that was sort of the first piece that I decided that I was going to compose my, my UI of. And I needed something uh, for the header part. And so I thought, well, they've got these nice block level buttons uh, that span the full width. And when I'm building a mobile web application, you know, to be consumed on a phone uh, or a tablet, uh, that's kind of the look that I'm going for. So I've got this combination um, at the the markup and styling level of a button plus uh, these stacked tabs. So that's sort of the first principle of composition that I kind of want to talk about. You know, when you think about building a mobile web application, I don't think you should be um, hamstrung into thinking that I have to use this list of predefined widgets from uh, jQuery Mobile or any of the other, or Sencha Touch or any of the other frameworks out there. I think uh, if you take, you know, even a look at Foundation, which is another really good uh, CSS uh, styling framework that has sort of these these basic sort of low level um, interface components that you can mix and match and compose things with, and you know this. Doesn't uh, I haven't tested it on every mobile device, but it, it works pretty good. I mean, uh, it seems like this didn't take too long to build uh, to get me the functionality that I wanted. 
Uh, and looking at the setup time involved in all of those other frameworks, it wasn't really apparent to me how I could achieve um, the same sorts of things. So let's, we kind of took a look at, you know, what, what this uh, collapsible list view is derived from. Let's take a look at the code uh, to see the principles of composition at work. Uh, so the first one we'll take a look at is the markup. Uh, let's open it up here. So here's the template for uh, that email list. And you can see a couple things. I'm, I'm using different pieces uh, of Bootstrap. I'm using um, the grid framework uh, this, with this class of row. Uh, I'm using um, their button styling. You can see here there's the, the piece that makes up the button, the header there. I'm using their icons, which is a nice piece that you can uh, mix and match with to get the, the plus sign and the minus sign for expanding it and contracting. Um, and then I'm using that uh, nav tabs and uh, nav stacked to generate uh, my, my list of elements. And I'm doing a little bit of custom styling just to set padding and margins and things like that. But those are the basic building blocks of this component. And that's the, the first level of composition is, you know, what are the repeated patterns that I can use, the markup patterns, and then what are the classes uh, and IDs that I can use that, that the framework provides me. So that's, that's the first level of composition. Let's take a look at the uh, style sheet for this piece. And you can see here, again, I'm using those, those uh, hooks that Bootstrap provides to provide some styling information. So um, I, I'm just kind of tweaking the border radiuses uh, so that when you collapse, uh, you've got a nice rounded corner on the whole thing. And when you expand, uh, it, it, uh, it expands and gets rid of the border radius on the bottom of the header there. So there, you know, those two pieces, the markup. Uh, I'm composing of bits and pieces of Bootstrap and uh, style sheet. I'm also um, customizing a bit of that, but relying on the defaults that that it provides. Uh, so we've looked at the template. We've looked at, at the style sheet. Let's take a look at um, what the actual JavaScript, or in this case, CoffeeScript view looks like. So here's my email list. And the first thing you'll probably notice is that I extend from this this base class. And so uh, when I talked earlier about inheritance and kind of maybe gave it a, a, a bad rap, um, I don't think inheritance is wrong. What I'm sort of trying to say is that d depending on deeply nested inheritance structures it is a bad idea. Um, in this app and in a lot of the backbone apps that I've written, uh, it makes sense to have one single um, view that has some responsibilities uh, that all views derive from. But going any further, uh, if I need to add behavior to this view, um, so for example, when I click on the header and I want to toggle this thing, uh, and when I want to show the drawer, um, I want to define that behavior somewhere else so that this um, is composed of different behaviors instead of inheriting behaviors through a, a bunch of classes that I continually extend. And so the first level uh, that I've done that with here is this concept of a mix-in. And uh, the nomenclature for a mix-in uh, is different depending on what language you're working in. But for my purposes, uh, a mix-in adds dynamic behavior uh, to this view. And so I've got this mix-in called collapsible um, that I'm going to add. And the other thing you'll notice is that um, I don't have any load order dependencies because this happens at runtime, not at compile time. So when I create an instance of this email list, that's when the behavior gets mixed in. Um, and this is an important uh, difference because if I set this relationship up such that I extended from, you know, maybe hello.views.collapsible, what that means is that when I load the files uh, for this app, I need to make sure that um, the collapsible view or the collapsible superclass is loaded before this one is. Whereas if I don't actually instantiate um, one of these things until uh, you know DOM ready happens and the app is loaded, then I can get away with this this runtime uh, dependency, and the load order doesn't matter. I could define uh, this class before or after the mixin class, and it, and it wouldn't matter. So that's one of the advantages of uh, using the power of composition instead of inheritance uh, is on the front end uh, you sim you simplify the load order dependencies and so what this mixin does we'll just open it up here and take a look 
it's pretty simple. Um, it just adds a toggle collapse function um, that knows about the markup patterns that I've composed this thing of uh, and knows how to um, toggle the right things so that when you click on the header, it's going to expand uh, the list view in the bottom, and when you click again, it's going to collapse it. And when you do that, it's also going to set the state of the icons and things like that. So that's the power of um, composing behavior using a mix-in uh, at work. Let's take a look at the next piece, um, which is the drawer. So that you know, when you click on an entry in the list, you know, I can see the subject line for the email, a little bit more information about it and then the body. And this is just a trivial example, but um, the goal is to provide an example for you to look at to say, I can build something like this and I can compose um, the interface widgets I want that if I'm building a mobile application. Uh, it's not necessarily a useful application in this case. I don't know if this uh, listing of emails in this UI would work well, but it, it should show you um, the principles of composition. So let's let's step back and let's take a look at the drawer. And we'll start again in the same place that we started with the collapsible. You can see here um, that again, I'm not uh, extending any classes, but instead when I when I create this instance, uh, I've, I'm just at runtime creating myself an instant instance of this email drawer. And so I'm not using a min uh, a mix in per se but I am using composition uh, to craft this. So let's take a look at the template for that. And this uh, component is composed of fewer Bootstrap defaults. Uh, there is no drawer component that you can find in Bootstrap, but there is uh, styling from a number of default elements. Uh, I've got the buttons at the bottom that are just, again, those button block elements. Uh, I've got the nice little uh, close icon at the top here. Um, but then the rest is basically just bootstrap uh, grids and uh, some other pieces. So let's take a look at what the, the styling looks like for that. And that's in this less file. And the other interesting thing is that I'm controlling the animation using uh, CSS3's uh, transitions. And so all of this information is neatly wrapped up um, in this drawer class. And you can see I, I've got uh, how long it takes the drawer to open and what type of animation. And these mix-ins um, are, are basically provided by Bootstrap. So I've just pulled the Bootstrap mixins.less. Um, and if you want to use them in your own projects, uh, you can do that. They uh, simplify creating uh, and styling components using some of these functions. They'll generate the right output for you for multiple browsers. So there's one level of composition, um, you know, composing this thing of the market patterns and styling it. And I'm also using mix-ins to compose uh, the style information so that I get the right output for multiple browsers. Um, and this is incredibly powerful. Let's take a look at the JavaScript code now that we've taken a look at the CSS and things like that. And here you'll see another mix-in. Uh, and this is the drawer mix-in. And so uh, I'm extending that same base class. So I've got the one level of inheritance, no more than that. At runtime, I'm going to mix in the behavior for the drawer. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. And in this case, um, drawers need to open and they need to close. And they need to render uh, a UI blocking layer so that the background content is sort of um, blocked it from being interacted with until they've uh, closed this, kind of like a modal window. At least that's in my scenario. So you notice I, I'm clicking over here, but I can't do anything until I close it. And then the, the faded uh, piece goes away. And so my mix-ins are basically aware of a couple of things. They're aware that I'm dealing with DOM elements. So I've got jQuery um, working on them. And they're also aware of the fact that I'm dealing with backbone views um, so I can actually dynamically add functions to them. Uh, so in this case, uh, this adds an open drawer and a closed drawer function. And the selector that I'm working on when I interact on those things is scoped to whatever element was rendered. Um, and the interesting thing about this is if I want to set up other drawers now, 
uh, it should be very easy for me to to create those and maybe they have different templates and different things like that I can just you know create another one of these provide it with which where it lives in the DOM maybe some custom events uh, and in this case when I click delete uh, it just deletes and then re-renders the list but all that behavior of the drawer uh, is encapsulated in this tiny little piece that I can use to compose. And so maybe I've got another piece that I can use to, to build it. And so I think um, the key that I'm trying to, key takeaway that I'm trying to give you in this video is that if you feel overwhelmed by a framework that you're working with, um, don't feel like you have to jump in and use it. Uh, often, in my experience, building web applications uh, with these frameworks has proven to be challenging because you're stuck with the conventions and the way of thinking. Um, and if you've got enough experience developing that you can build your own conventions, uh, that's an incredibly powerful thing. And uh, definitely um, using the power of composition, using mix-ins to compose things, uh, instead of using inheritance, which gives you load order dependencies, you can um, move things from a compile time or a parse time in the case of the browser uh, to a runtime when I actually need to create this thing is when I establish the relationship and the behavior between um, the elements. So all of this code uh, I'm going to put into a link and it's, it'll be available uh, at the end here in the video description. Definitely check it out. You're free to free to take this uh, and work with it. And uh, I didn't go into depth on the way this thing is structured, but that wasn't really the goal of this talk. The goal was to give you an overview of um, the power of composition uh, and some of the advantages that uh, it can give you and to show you that you can build your own widgets using some pretty sort of low-level frameworks like Backbone and Bootstrap. Thanks for watching.